So sometimes you don't get as much product as stoichiometry says you should get. The amount you actually get is called your actual yield. And what stoichiometry predicts is called your theoretical yield. Now, there are multiple reasons for this, but this is always true. The actual yield is less than the theoretical yield. And let's just use the abbreviations AY and TY. So AY is always less than TY. Why? Well, for one thing, the purity of reactants is always less than 100%, right? Even if a reactant is very pure, there's still some impurities in it. So the mass that you're using is higher than the actual mass of reactant. There's also competing side reactions. Um, sometimes the same reactants can combine to give different products. For instance, when you take carbon and you burn it with oxygen, you can get carbon dioxide, but you can also get carbon monoxide. Right, two different gases that you can get from um, burning carbon. Right, so if you do um, the stoichiometry to see how much carbon dioxide you get and your actual yield is lower, well, maybe some went into making carbon monoxide. Then there's the issue of reversible reactions. Sometimes they go backwards. Right, and you'll know it's a reversible reaction because you'll have your reactants on one side and your products on the other, but you'll see this goofy double arrow. That means that the reaction is reversible and it's not going to go 100%. But we can calculate the extent of a reaction using the following equation. Percent yield equals actual over theoretical times 100. Or percent Y equals AY over TY times 100. So if we know two of these things, we can find the other. So here's a percent yield question. We've got that um, when we react 200 grams of magnesium bromide with excess silver nitrate, we get 375 grams of silver bromide, right? So this 375 grams, that is our actual yield, right? And we're trying to find the percent yield. Percent yield equals actual yield over theoretical yield times 100. So we have to calculate theoretical yield and we'll do that by stoichiometry. Mapping it out, it's familiar. We're going to use a molar mass to go from grams of MgBr2 to moles of MgBr2. We'll use a mole ratio to go from moles of MgBr2 to moles of AgBr. And we will use another molar mass to find grams of AgBr. Let's see what the calculation looks like. So we started out with 200 grams of magnesium bromide. We use the molar mass to, um, well, divide by the molar mass to make grams of magnesium bromide go away. In the next step, we use a mole ratio to make moles of magnesium bromide go away and convert to moles of AgBr. In the final step, we use the molar mass of AGBR to make moles of AGBR go away and get grams of AGBR. And when I punch it into my calculator, I get 407.8 grams. That is 
the theoretical yield. So now the percent yield, again, equals the actual yield over the theoretical yield times 100. So our actual yield was given to be 375 grams. Our theoretical yield is 407.8 grams and we multiply it by 100. And that gives us 91 point, oh, actually 92.0%. Now, your percent yield should always be less than 100. If it's more than 100, you've made a mistake.